I-Team is digging into the state parole board and found out their rate of parole has increased by about 24% since 2013. We're learning new information on what led to a suspected triple murder suspect being paroled before those crimes, despite the fact that he was supposed to be serving a life sentence for the crimes he committed in the Shoals. The Alabama Pardon and Parole Board is made up of three people who are appointed by the governor. They serve in six-year terms, and according to parole documents, in 2017, their parole rate increased to 54 percent. One of the ex-cons they paroled was Jimmy Spencer, who was released in January 2018. He was supposed to spend six months at a halfway house in Birmingham, but walked away after only three weeks. The Mission Center told Way 31 they notified the state. Police wrote citations in May for misdemeanor offenses Spencer committed in Guntersville State Park. In June, he was arrested on drug charges by Sardis police. They told us they notified the state as well, but nothing ever happened. Spencer now stands accused of killing three people in Guntersville. The Way 31I team wanted to know what led Spencer to being paroled in the first place and who exactly is on that parole board. Way 31's Brecken Terry joins us live in the shows with an in-depth look at the parole board. Brecken. I went to Montgomery to ask the parole board why its parole rates have jumped so much in the past five years. A spokesperson with the board told me they hear about 6,500 cases a year, yet its releasing numbers continue to rise. If you look at the data, they paroled 1,000 more people in 2017 than they did in 2016. I saw more people paroled in the first six months under this new system than I did in 15 years before. Jeanette Grantham makes regular trips to parole hearings as a victim's advocate. She's the state director of a nonprofit named VOCAL that stands for Victims of Crime and Leniency. The three people that sit on that board is the most powerful people in the state because they can override anything that a judge does. The parole board told me the percentage of inmates released is typical across the country. The board usually um, does around 50% of approvals, which is consistent with the national average. That number doesn't look at what prisoners are in for or the length of their sentence. I asked the assistant executive director of the Alabama Pardon and Parole Board what it does consider. There's a personal interview with the inmate uh, by our institutional parole officers giving personal history of that individual, any updated living arrangements, any job plans, things along those lines. Daryl Morgan also said the board looks at an extensive file with any disciplinary actions, an inmate's complete history, victims' letters, and more before the hearing. But when I was in Montgomery earlier this week, I watched as the parole board went through almost every case in less than five minutes. Twice the members voted to let a convicted murderer back on the streets. Morgan told me the state's letting more inmates out because there are more parole officers to watch them. The board felt more comfortable letting people out because of the fact that we would be better able to supervise them and we would be better able to provide them services, things that we wasn't able to do previously. The board also uses an analytical tool to determine an inmate's rate of reoffending. The reasons for letting someone out looks like this, a checklist. Many, including Grantham, feel like this analytical tool takes out a personal judgment when considering someone for parole. We need more than a check mark on a piece of paper. Use that as a tool, but put some other, something, a human element into that. The parole board says the checklist gives clear lines on the board's decision. Grantham believes it's creating a lack of confidence in the board to make the best decision for the public. Where before they thought, well, their crime was so hideous and everything that they, no one would possibly parole them. They don't have that security anymore. Now, I asked Morgan if the board understood why people are upset, and he said they do understand and that the murders in Gunnersville are a tragedy. Live in Florence, Frank and Terry, Way 31 News.